In today's lesson, we'll look at five things you can learn from Trevor Noah about accents. When speaking to somebody in an accent, the number one rule to understand is an accent is not a measurement of intelligence. Right? An accent is just somebody speaking your language with the rules of theirs. That's all an accent is. So don't speak down to them. Don't patronize them. Speak to them the way you would to yourself. Just try and learn their accent. That's all it is. It's just another accent. The hilarious South African stand-up comedian is best known for his witty commentary on Comedy Central's The Daily Show. As a polyglot who speaks seven languages, accent is a topic that Trevor talks about quite often. But before we get into today's lesson, if you would like to watch your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without needing subtitles, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and bell down below so you never miss out on any of our new lessons. Here, Trevor shares an example of an occasion where speaking in a different accent made it easier to communicate. Let's watch. I learned a valuable lesson. I was driving to Gold Reef City one day into the backstage area and the security guard came out to the boom and he was like, hey, how are you, sir? Is your name on the list? I said, yes, sir. How are you, Baba? Uh, my name is Trevor. He's like, okay, Chabal, 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 Chabal. I said, no, 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 Trevor. He's like, oh, sorry, <laughs> Chabal, 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 Chabal. I said, no, Trevor, Chabal. Trevor, Shalva, Trevor, Trevor, Shalva, Trevor, Trevor, Shalva, Trevor, Shalva. And now my friend who was irritated, he just leans over me and he's like, hey, Papa, get Trevor. He was like, oh, Trevor. Why you don't talk properly? And then I understood, I understood. I finally understood what white people have been trying to do. I see, you're trying to communicate more effectively, you're trying to engage somebody, but understand this, understand this. When speaking to somebody in an accent, the number one rule to understand is an accent is not a measurement of intelligence, right? An accent is just somebody speaking your language with the rules of theirs, that's all an accent is. So don't speak down to them, don't patronize them. Speak to them the way you would to yourself, just try and learn their accent, that's all it is, it's just another accent, yeah. And I learn them, I learn them, I spend all my time learning accents, I try. I try, I love it. I said, yes, uh, how are you, Baba? Uh, my name is Trevor. To give you some context, in South Africa, especially among Zulu speakers, Baba, meaning father, is used when speaking to an older black male who is not necessarily related to the speaker. Here's the first thing you can learn from Trevor about accents. Learning about different cultures and accents may help you communicate more efficiently. Hey, Papa, get Trevor! He was like, oh, Trevor! Why you don't talk properly? The word properly means correctly or in a satisfactory way. Hey, Papa, get Trevor! He was like, oh, Trevor! Why you don't talk properly? In this example, Trevor demonstrates how even though both he and the security guard were speaking English, they still misunderstood each other. However, when his friend communicated in the accent of the security guard, they were able to understand each other clearly. As there are many different English accents, having an understanding of different cultures could improve your communication. Next, we have the second thing we can learn from Trevor. Learning accents can help you connect with other cultures. I see, you're trying to communicate more effectively. You're trying to engage somebody, but... To engage with someone means to establish a meaningful connection with them. Although you don't always have to change your accent to connect with others, when it is done correctly, it shows that you are taking an interest in and making an effort to understand the other person's culture. So feel free to practice using your favorite English accent. The third thing Trevor highlights is, accent is not a measure of intelligence. When speaking to somebody in an accent, the number one rule to understand is an accent is not a measurement of intelligence. Intelligence means the ability to understand and learn well and to form judgments and opinion based on reason. Our accents can never determine whether or not we are intelligent. As long as your pronunciation is clear and you are able to be understood, you have reached your goal of communicating. 
And the fourth point he mentions is, accents should be used respectfully. So don't speak down to them, don't patronize them. We use the expression to speak down to when someone talks in an overly simple way or changes the way they speak, which suggests that the listener is not intelligent. This can be seen as very disrespectful, so it's better to speak as you normally would and then check whether the other person understands. So don't speak down to them, don't patronize them. Patronize also means to speak to or behave towards someone as if they were stupid or unimportant. Do you want to be able to watch absolutely anything in English without subtitles? If understanding the jokes, culture and every word is important to you, then our free three-part masterclass is just what you need to speak English more confidently and naturally. Simply sign up now by clicking up here or down in the description box below. In this scene from The Daily Show, Trevor shares his experience with learning accents as a child. How do I do it with the accents? I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, like, I never thought I was good at it or anything, but I, I think it's because I grew up like that. I have a mixed family. Like, everyone in my family has a different accent. You know, so my dad, my dad's family, my mom, my mom's family, everyone has like a, like a hybrid because everyone moved around a lot. So whenever you go to a different house, it's just easier to speak to them in their accent <laughs> than to try... No, because it was weird as well, like, because I went to a private school, like, myself and my, my cousins, we were all lucky to go to... Like, at the time, they called them Model C schools in South Africa. So it was, like, the first generation of black and white kids at the same schools. So we had different accents to our parents. And then, you, like, your parents were happy to send you there. That was the funny thing. It's like your parents would be like, you must go to that school and you must learn to speak good English. <laughs> and then you'd go to the school and you'd learn the English and then you'd come home. And then like your parents, you'd be sitting with them watching TV or something. And then like your, your, your dad would be like, put volume, put volume. And then you'd be like, uh, do you mean increase the volume? Be like, hey, <laughs> I'll increase or decrease your life. Don't act smart here. Put volume. You don't come here with that English and it's like, yeah, but that's what you told us. So then it became easier to just like speak the, you know what I mean? Speak in the accent of the people, it changes. But I, I think it's because I grew up like that. I have a mixed family. Trevor uses connected speech in the sentence. He uses the reduced form of because, which is cause, and when said very quickly, the words flow into each other and sounds like, it's cause I. I think it's cause I. Since Trevor's mother is a black Hausa woman and his father is a white Swiss man, when he says that he's from a mixed family, it means that his family consists of people of different racial groups. However, a mixed family can also refer to a blended family, which means a family consisting of a couple, the children they have together, and their children from previous relationships. Like, everyone in my family has a different accent, you know? We sometimes use the words, you know, at the end of sentences for the following reasons. You know gives other people the idea that you have some kind of shared knowledge with them. In this context, Trevor is using it because his audience might already know that his family members have different accents because it's something he talks about quite often. This is Alan again. How's it going? It's going pretty good, you know. It's nice. We're having fun. So when do we get to meet the guy? Yeah. Sometimes people use you know because they want to know if you agree with them. Okay, look, this is probably for the best, you know? Independence, taking control of your life. Other times we use it as a filler in a conversation or discussion. Saying you know gives the speaker time to think about what they want to say next. And then I got really freaked out, and that's when it hit me. How much Barry looks like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> you know, I mean, I always know he looked familiar, but... <laughs> and finally, try to expose yourself to as many different accents as possible. You know, so my dad, my dad's family, my mom, my mom's family, everyone has like a, like a hybrid because everyone moved around a lot. Here, Trevor is saying that because his family members moved around often, their accents were influenced by different cultures and languages. It's possible to expose yourself to different cultures and accents in various other ways, such as movies and music. 
you know. So my dad, my dad's family, my mom, my mom's family, everyone has like a like a hybrid because everyone moved around a lot. Hybrid means a mixture of two different things, which result in something that is a little bit of both of those things. For example, the animal looks like a hybrid of a zebra and a donkey. But a shilder isn't just human anymore. A little piece of alien inside her. So in a way, she's. She's a hybrid. Like at the time, they called them Model C schools in South Africa. The term Model C is still sometimes used in South Africa to describe formal whites-only schools that were funded by the government and parent body. For example, during the apartheid era in South Africa, non-white children could not attend Model C schools. So it was like the first generation of black and white kids at the same schools. In this context, generation is all the people of about the same age within society or within a particular family. The city is so old. You think about all the people who've lived here, generation after generation, hundreds and hundreds of years, all those lives. God, it's so sad. However, it can also mean a form, type or class of objects existing at the same time and having many similarities or developed from a common model. For example, the next generation of telecommunication technology will be even more advanced than what we can imagine. Are you aware of Living Robotics 3 income streams? Consumer electronics, next generation prosthetics, unmanned military applications. Generation can also mean the production or creation of something. For example, the company specializes in electricity generation. <laughs> I'll increase or decrease your life. Don't act smart here. If someone cautions you, don't act smart, they are demanding that you stop acting so bold or rude. They may even think that you are acting as though you know more about something than they do, which is what Trevor's father is referring to. You know, George Reapin isn't like some waitress straight in the shifts. The noble vocation. I don't need your smart mouth. It's serious business. Serious business. The word smart can also mean intelligent, stylish, rich. So today we looked at the following five things you can learn from Trevor regarding accents. Expose yourself to different accents. Learning about different cultures and accents may help you communicate more efficiently. Learning accents may help you connect with other cultures. Accent is not a measure of intelligence. Accents should be used respectfully. Family. Like everyone in my family has a different accent, you know, so my dad, my dad's family, my mom, my mom's family, everyone has like a, like a hybrid because everyone moved around a lot. So whenever you go to a different house. What does Trevor mean by hybrid? Mixed? Strange? Car? Trevor, Shalom, Shalman, Trevor, Trevor, Shalom, Shalman. And now my friend who was irritated, he just leans over me and he's like, hey, Papa, get Trevor. <laughs> he's like, oh, Trevor. Why you don't talk properly? <laughs> and then I understood, I understood. I finally understood what white people have been trying to do. I see, you're trying to communicate more effectively, you're trying to engage somebody, but understand this, understand this. When people engage, it means they laugh together, connect with each other, learn a lesson. When speaking to somebody in an accent, the number one rule to understand is an accent is not a measurement of intelligence, right? An accent is just somebody speaking your language with the rules of theirs. That's all an accent is. So don't speak down to them. Don't patronize them. Speak to them the way you would to yourself. Just try and learn their accent. That's all it is. It's just another accent. If you speak down to someone, you think that they are smart, rude, unimportant. If you 
enjoyed this lesson, then be sure to share it with a friend who is also learning English. And check out this one next. British people are known for their love of drinking tea. In many places in England, tea time is usually around 5 p.m. However, it's important to mention that tea time is not just about drinking tea, but simply having one more meal during the day. We shall have supper early. Don't be ridiculous. It's six o'clock. What will tell the kitchens we'll eat in 45 minutes? But it's tea time. 